Unlike the towns of the Witwatersrand which owe their development to the discovery of gold, Vanderbilt Park owes its establishment to the expansion of the iron and steel industry in South Africa, and its creation and phenomenal development is in the main, to be attributed to the vision and foresight of its founder, the late Dr. H. J. Vanderbilt. Welcome to today's video. In this episode, we'll be exploring Vanderbilt Park, which is an industrial town with approximately 95,000 inhabitants, and is situated on the Vaal River in the south of the Hauteng province of South Africa. Let's explore its rich history and take a closer look at the crucial role the steel plant played in defining the town's identity. Dr. Van der Bale one of the most influential South Africans of the 20th century, together with Dr. Frederick Meyer, a student of Albert Einstein while studying in Berlin, and others, were the main driving force behind the establishment of the South African Iron and Steel Industrial Corporation, is core. Dr. Van der Bale, a young South African electrical engineer working in the United States at the time, was summoned to return to South Africa in 1920, by then Prime Minister Jan Smuts, to advise the government on South Africa's industrial development planning. His core with its first works in Pretoria built by the German DMAG, was established as a state company. The objectives were to produce iron and a range of steel products, and to create employment opportunities. Dr. Van der Bale was in charge of the Ascor Corporation's first iron and steel plant in Pretoria, and production at that plant began in 1934. During wartime, there was a surge in demand for steel and the production of various essential goods locally. As a result, the need for its core expansion became inevitable, and the Pretoria works had reached their maximum capacity for growth. In 1941, Dr. Van der Bale and the other directors identified the necessity for expansion into a new region. They made the decision to reconsider the concept of establishing a new steelworks in the Fureniking area. To meet the urgent requirements of the war, it was determined that a plate rolling mill should be constructed. The mill was designed in a manner that would allow it to be seamlessly incorporated into a larger integrated steelworks facility in the future. Its strategic location along the Vaal River, approximately 80 kilometers south of Johannesburg and 16 kilometers west of Fereniking, made it an ideal area for development. The best location was situated downstream from the intake of the Rand Water Board's pumping station, 
and had a sufficient slope to allow for effective drainage towards the river. Strategically locating heavy industries on higher ground can help mitigate pollution risks by taking advantage of prevailing winds. Dr. van der Beel successfully convinced his cause directors that the ideal site for their new steelworks was the area along the Vaal River. As a result, his corps acquired 100 square kilometers of land in that location. location for the fully integrated steelworks was selected after World War II. The Vanderbilt Park Works was officially inaugurated by His Excellency the Governor-General, Dr. E.G. Janssen, on October 4, 1952, following the commencement of construction in 1947. The corporation introduced several new production units in 1953, and in 1956 and 1960, they announced ambitious plans for expansion. The second phase of construction at Vanderbilt Park Works began in 1964 and was completed in 1969. During this period, significant expansions were made and older facilities were modernized to produce high-value goods like electrolytic tin plate for the beverage and canning industries. Dr. van der Beel was familiar with the haphazard development of other towns in South Africa, and understood the many difficulties that arise from a lack of effective urban planning. He emphasized the importance of avoiding any planning mistakes in the development of van der Beel Park. As a result, his core made the decision to establish a dedicated town planning department to effectively plan and develop this new town. On December 28, 1944, the Vanderbilt Park Estate Company, a subsidiary of his core, was established as a public utility company. The responsibilities of the his core town planning department were subsequently transferred to this newly formed company. Vanderbilt Park's planning was highly detailed with careful consideration given to the names of the suburbs and streets in advance. Taking inspiration from London, it was decided to name the districts based on their postal district designations. This not only ensured that the identifiable were easily identifiable, but also added an element of familiarity. The Vanderbilt Park residential area is divided by the main boulevard running from north to south and the National Road running east to west. The districts in the area are numbered and have prefixes like CW2, SW2, or NE3 to indicate their positions relative to the town center. The streets are named after international figures who have had distinguished careers in various fields such as science, engineering, music, medicine, and more. On December 28, 1944, the Vanderbilt Park Estate Company, a subsidiary of his core, was established as a public utility company. The his core town planning department's responsibilities were then transferred to this newly formed company. His core initially purchased all the land in Vanderbilt Park. However, they only selected the portions of land that were needed for their own purposes. The remaining land was sold to the Vanderbilt Park Estate Company at cost. This allowed the company to proceed with the establishment and development of the town. 
All income and profits, regardless of their source, are dedicated exclusively to advancing the company's objectives. These objectives encompass various initiatives, such as town planning, the establishment and development of townships, and the coordinated growth of the town in a manner that resembles a contemporary garden city and industrial town. The primary aim is to maximize the provision of amenities, conveniences, and benefits for the overall welfare of residents. The town was granted full municipal status on 29 October 1952 and Councillor S. G. Waterston was elected as the first mayor. Since 2015, the town has had a gradual negative economic growth, to such a degree that the local council was declared bankrupt in November 2019. Investigations revealed that the town's mayor embezzled 800 million rand of property tax proceeds over eight months, leading to a major collapse in industries and building development. Many developers and local businesses capitalized on the buyer's market after 2015, demonstrating their commitment to the town's revival. Investors who are looking to purchase commercial properties often face challenges, particularly due to the high land tax rates which are among the highest in the country. Despite this, the value they receive in return from local government services is relatively low. Consequently, investing in Vanderbilt Park properties tends to be more feasible for wealthier individuals due to the substantial expenses property owners incur when assuming responsibility for maintaining the infrastructure. The architectural style of Van der Bale Park reflects significant influences from Dutch, French, German, and Italian traditions, stemming from the influx of foreign settlers during the late 1800s and early 1900s. From the early 1900s until the late 1980s, a few affluent developers, including entities like Visser Properties, as well as prominent families such as the Visser, Diaz, and Storm families, dominated the local construction industry. The town centre includes numerous historic buildings, many of which are stunning examples of classic architecture. However, over the years, some of these structures from the 1800s and early 1900s have deteriorated significantly. Nevertheless, various individuals and companies are engaged in restoring these elegant residences to their original splendour.
of the houses in the town were built between 1947 and 1964 by ISCOR, following identical specifications. These homes are currently occupied by approximately 60% of the town's population. In addition, the open spaces surrounding the central business district have been utilized for the construction of large modern structures and apartment complexes.
In addition to the nearby Pont de Val wine estate, Vanderbilt Park boasts several attractions. These include the Emerald Casino Resort, Emphaleni Golf Course, Isaac Still Stadium, and the Val Mall, which was constructed in the mid-2000s. Another significant part of the Val's wealth lies on the Marl bank of the Val River towards Loch Val, west of the CBD where several of these homes are sized up to 7,000 square meters and more. This region is commonly known as Billionaire's Bend, as it is home to some of the most luxurious properties in Africa, with prices starting at 100 million rand for a single property. A considerable portion of the residents in the Marlbank River stretch area are not involved in any business activities within the town. Rather, they are attracted to the region due to its scenic landscapes and luxurious estates. Helicopter traffic is a common sight as affluent property owners from Marlbank frequently travel to and from the nearby city of Johannesburg, which is located at approximately 80 kilometers to the north. As we conclude our exploration of Vanderbilt Park and its steel plant, we are reminded of the town's remarkable journey from its industrial origins to its present-day vibrancy. Vanderbilt Park stands as a testament to the resilience and ingenuity of its people, and the steel plant remains an enduring symbol of the city's industrial heritage and economic significance. We hope you've enjoyed learning about this fascinating city and its remarkable history, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.